And I suppose in the last two years, we've had a massive blow with the Brexit agreement, haven't we? Absolutely. Like, you know, for the country with the richest resource besides the UK, like, let's yes. be honest, if, if you were to pick the two best countries before Europe left, uh, the UK left, it would be the waters around the UK and Ireland. And that's yeah. guaranteed. That's why everybody's trying to get in here. So for us to pay the biggest price, we didn't just lose our own fish. We have to explain it like this. If you went out with a meal now, yes. right, with your friends, mm -hmm. and you paid for your own meal, everybody was yeah. to pay for their own meal, but before you got the chance to put the wallet away, your guest or the person, like not your guest, your friend, took your wallet off you and paid for some of the meal with some of your money and passed it around the table. Mm. That's what happened. You see, what people have to understand is that, yes, the other countries had a right to come and catch the fish in our waters, but what Brexit did was completely changed it. It changed that fish into an asset that they could trade on their behalf. So they didn't pay the UK their payment mm -hmm. with their fish from French waters or from Dutch waters. They paid it with stocks from Irish, Irish waters. waters yeah. So they paid the bill with Irish fish. Yeah. So we paid a way more than uh, 50 million. I reckon we paid 80 or 90 million. Yeah. But they turned a right into an asset, into a commodity overnight. And that hasn't been explained to the public yet. That's why I say we were robbed. And yeah. I'll stand over that statement. Yeah. And if any economist wants to sit down and have this discussion with us, we can go through the figures and so we can show it. So the real challenges we have now in this current year, we've got the trade and cooperation agreement and the inequality that arises from that. Yep. And the second thing then, we've got a review of the common fisheries policy. How do we get a better share of the total EU catch within our own waters? It's well, a challenge. The, the it's not an insurmountable challenge, right? No. And I'll explain why. The way that the fishermen, as you know, you're yeah. learning this yourself, right? That each country can carry over 10% of yes. the fish that they didn't catch that they were allocated in the previous year, yeah. right? So in other words, if you have a thousand tons of fish and you catch 900, then yeah. you can carry over the 100 next year. I believe that they have so much fish that they're catching around 80 or 75%. Yeah. So then the, to get them to 90, that 15% is lost. And you see, if we were operating outside of the European Union, there's an international law called the Law of the Sea, yeah. and it, it governs migratory and, and stocks. That would be applicable to Ireland. And we would be getting that fish back, no question, because if you're not catching it, you have to give it back to the host mm -hmm. nation where the fish are bred and born and spawned. And for me, that's what the common fishery policy has to identify and come to terms with. And we're not asking them to give over fish. We're just asking for lads, you're not using this, yes. it's going to go dead. The best way to describe it is this, right? You can imagine some fellow having apples in, a, in an orchard and the fellow outside the wall is starving, right? Yeah. And rather than give him the apples, he's letting him fall on the ground and rot. Yeah. Like, that's a complete waste. So and we're asking that to be addressed in the common fishery. And place. when all of this is happening, there's so much anger and dismay because Irish boats are being tied up. And they see these large international vessels fishing in our waters at the same time. And, and, and they're in jeopardy because they have very little room to manoeuvre. You know, yeah. again, for the ordinary person outside yeah. there, the best way to describe it is you're driving down the road and you have a sign for the international boys for 120 miles an hour. Yeah. And then you have the Irish fellas, it's 80 miles an hour, right? But you're expected to get to the same destination in the same time as the other yeah. fella. That's the, there's a race. Yeah. But you have to drive at 80 kilometres, and if you go over that, you're penalised. Yeah. So we have so little quotas. They have so much of our quotas in, in their waters. Then they have greater flexibility. So they can sit on the ground and catch twice and three times the fish when they're in abundance yeah. and stay legal. Whereas when we catch a certain amount, we have to leave and go somewhere else to catch a different type of fish because we don't have the same quotas of them. So yeah. we're at a complete disadvantage. All these things need to be addressed in, yeah. in the common fishery policy and the, the clues in the name. and the important thing about the common fisheries policy when you do read, read it is that there is a commitment by the eu to the social dimension of fishing to sustainable communities but what's happening flies completely in the face of that doesn't it yeah so like we will be asking when we go you and both yeah. and i will be asking these questions over there like we're yeah. discussing it here now for the ordinary person but for me i will be asking where is the standing of the three pillars of, of the common fishery policy so you have the um, sustainability of the yes. stocks, which is critical. If we kill, if we kill for everybody, we're all committed, no, to, that. We're all committed to that. The, the the second one then is the um, environment, yeah. right? So that's the environmental pillar. So that's that's the other variables outside there. And the third one then is 
that it's for the coastal communities that are most dependent on the yeah. resource. Now, I don't see too many of the other coastal communities decommissioning boats yeah. and losing their rights to go fishing after the, uh, the Brexit TCA agreement. But we do here. We're, we're, we're here in Dublin to meet our minister yes. to talk about that very topic now of how we can mitigate the damage. We've had a task force. We're still waiting for a lot of that to be implemented. Very frustrated over what happened with the task force. And here we are now going into this review. And this was promised in October, remember? Yeah. And now right. we're into the end of February, like. And, and simply put, I mean, we've got about 11 to 16,000 people involved in the sector, don't we? Working. Directly. Directly. Directly working. So that's not including part time people and all the other spin off jobs, like, you know, the um, service industry. Service industry. Yeah. So for every boats and leads, you're going to have uh, refrigeration units. Yeah. You're going to have communication experts. You even have satellites uh, going into boats. You have uh, um, engineers. Yes. You know, th like you have shipwrights. You have painters, decorators that yeah. go in and look after the boats. So, like the, the the service industry for that alone is that. Then you have the lorries that are delivering the fish. You have the co-ops, yeah. people that are driving there, the people that live in the communities. Like BIM did uh, an evaluation of what the contribution yeah. of of fishing was in the coastal areas. Every one of them is up around 80 to 90%. Yeah. Like you take that uh, economic driver from the coastal communities, there won't be coastal communities. Like You'll have holiday no. villages That's where right. people will be coming down during the summer and they'll be launching a rib and there'll be a pontoon or something like that launched there. But there won't be a community like, no. you know? This was brought home to me. My uncle plays with a, a GA club in Goleen, right? And mm. GA is the fabric of our society and I'll explain why. After the Civil War, instead of brother fighting brother, mm. it was parish versus yeah. parish, Support. and it healed the nation. Yeah. So that is a real critical part of, of our country. But if we don't have the young people in the coastal communities, in those areas, mm. then you're losing that entire social element of that community. Yeah. What's going to replace it? And we have teams now that just can't put out a team. The young yeah. people are not there. And this is proof positive that how, how is getting rid of a third of our fleet yeah. in the coastal communities that I'm talking about, going to assist or, or help that. It's going to completely wipe it out and it'll be a domino effect. Yeah. It won't just stop in the coastal communities. You're talking 30 or 40 miles in. Mm. It's, it's going to be like a tsunami in from the shoreline if we lose our fishing industry. And it's going to happen. Yeah, so we really need people to wake up to how important the fishing sector is to coastal communities. And, and themselves. From a socioeconomic point yeah. of view. And it is part of our culture, isn't it? Absolutely. Like, be, be, Maybe we are at fault ourselves for not looking for an actual classification for the people in the coastal communities. You know, that they are an indigenous yes. people of this island, like, you know, like the islanders. You know, I come from an island community yeah. and until there was resources put into the islands, the islands were dying. They were actually giving land in the in, in the big part of Ireland mm. and, and taking it off the fellas in the islands. Do you know yes. what I mean? So they were, yeah, you're holding inside the island now, you need 20 acres, so we'll take three of you out. That'll give... 60 to 80 acres to a lead and we'll give them somewhere else in, in, mm. in the inland. But sure, they were killing the islands. Yeah. They were reducing the population, the schools closed. You know, I've seen this in my lifetime, like. Yeah. So, and and, and it's not, it, it's going to happen to the coast. And going back well. now to the Brexit agreement, we are starting to see the negative impacts of that in terms of employment and catching opportunities all along the coast. On the east coast, the south coast, the west coast and the north west. Everywhere, like, do you know, the easiest way to describe this for, persons outside to understand Packy Bonner came up to myself and yes. the lad you're replacing now inside in the IFPO and he said um, Jesus John he said what happened to Burtonport yeah. I, I, it only seems like yesterday That's right. I left the place and went to Scotland there's no fishing there anymore the fishing yeah. is gone That's right. and he said to me it was a thriving it was the it was the, the foundation of Burtonport all the surrounding areas and he said yeah. it's gone it's, it's, That's it's right. gone That's so right. for somebody in that position <laughs> You know, we, we'd love for people that are passionate or have any connections to the sea to listen to what we're saying and realise this affects them and their families and looking back. You know, we had the Russian incident that myself mm -hmm. and Brendan uh, and you know very well. We managed very effectively. Well, yes, but we didn't do anything extraordinary. We just said it as it was and we were fearful of what this would mean for yeah. the fishing industry. And the public got behind us. We're looking for the same reaction to what we're saying now okay. and our media isn't covering this like and the Republic Broadcasting Service and 
I don't agree with the way that they're allowing this to happen. We are, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a niche part of this yeah. uh, the, uh, the, the fabric of Ireland. And we're not going to be replaced. Well, we like. are on the periphery. We are on the coast. We, if, if we were a species of bird or any other animal, yeah. we would have an endangered sign over our heads. like you know. So we have a big job. We have, and, and as I said, we have the solutions there, yeah. and it won't hurt anybody else. No. We just need the people in the positions to carry the message for us yeah. out there to help us. No, if they don't, at this stage, you and I both know that this is the reason why we're doing these clips, yeah. is because we want people to know we're not going to stop. Mm. We're not going to give in without a fight. We're not moving, as we said to the Russians, yeah. and we're telling our government and everybody else, we're not moving okay. here either. 